Saints in Christ and welcome to evening prayer from St. Michael and All Angels for the 18th Sunday after Pentecost, Proper 23. Our readings are for the evening prayer of Proper 23. We begin with the general sentence on page 59 in our Books of Common Prayer. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life and to be glorified through all the worlds. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. In a moment of silence, let us ask God to reveal to us those areas where we have displeased him, and ask that he send the Holy Spirit to help guide us into truth and into his righteousness. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Psalms for this evening are Psalms 111 to 113, beginning on page 619 in our Books of Common Prayer. Hallelujah! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast for ever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures 
forever. Psalm 112. Hallelujah. Uh, happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. The desire of the wicked will perish. Psalm 113 Hallelujah! Give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed. From this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who sits enthroned on high, but stoops to behold the heavens and the earth? He takes up the weak out of the dust, and lifts up the poor from the ashes. He sets them with the princes, with the princes of his people. He makes the woman of a childless house to be joyful, a mother of children. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 36, beginning at verse 1. In the fourth year of King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah, the word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Take a scroll and write on it all the words that I have spoken to you against Israel and Judah and all the nations from the day I spoke to you from the days of Josiah until today. It may be that when the house of Judah hears of all the disasters that I intend to do to them, all of them may turn from their evil ways so that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Then Jeremiah called Baruch, son of Nera, and Baruch wrote on a scroll at Jeremiah's dictation all the words of the Lord that he had spoken to him. And Jeremiah ordered Baruch, saying, I am prevented from entering the house of the Lord. So you go yourself, and on a fast day, in the hearing of the people in the Lord's house, you shall read the words of the Lord from the scroll that you have written at my dictation. You shall read them also in the hearing of all the people of Judah who come up from their towns. It may be that their plea will come before the Lord and that all of them will turn from their evil ways. For great is the anger and wrath that the Lord has pronounced against this people. And Baruch, son of Nera, 
did all that the prophet Jeremiah ordered him about reading from the scroll the words of the Lord in the Lord's house. In the fifth year of the king of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah, in the ninth month, all the people in Jerusalem and all the people who came from the towns of Judah to Jerusalem proclaimed a fast before the Lord. Then in the hearing of all the people, Baruch read the words of Jeremiah from the scroll in the house of the Lord in the chamber of Garma, son of Shapan, the secretary, which was in the upper court at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now return to page 67 on our bo in our Books of Common Prayer, where we shall recite the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior. For you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from the book of First Corinthians, chapter 4, beginning at verse 9. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, as though sentenced to death because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to mortals. We are fools for the sake of Christ, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To the present hour, we are hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless, and we grow weary from the work of our hands. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we speak kindly. We have become like the rubbish of the world, the dregs of all things to this very day. I am not writing this to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you might have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. Indeed, in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. I appeal to you then to be imitators of me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now turn to the canticle. A song of penitence found on page 55 of our Books of Common Prayer. O Lord and Ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, 
and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness, unworthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. This evening, our reflection is coming from Psalm 112. Why serve God? This has always been a burning question to which people cannot get a satisfactory answer. Otherwise, we would all be serving God. Well, in Psalm 112, we do get such an answer. Psalm 112 is a wisdom psalm that provides instruction in right living and right faith in the tradition of the wisdom teachings of the Old Testament. Psalm 112 and Psalm 111 are considered acrostic, with each of its 20 lines beginning with a successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Psalm 111 celebrates God's mighty deeds on behalf of the people, and Psalm 112 offers instruction for response to God by his people. Scholars observe that Psalm 111 is theology, while Psalm 112 is more focused on anthropology. Psalm 112 invites us as readers to reflect on the nature of a blessed life. In today's worldly culture, it offers a version of a blessed life that is very sexual, self-centered and is contrary to what we will find in the Bible. This message, because of its pervasive coverage, in some way or other affects each and every one of us. Despite our willful objections to the pleasure-seeking core principles of that message, we continue to be bombarded and, dare I say, attempted to be brainwashed by this worldly message. Most people in today's world chase after shiny trinkets or beads because they are not sure as to what constitutes a meaningful life. In our 24-7 world, a common way we tell others about who we are or would like to be is through our use and display of an accumulation of material wealth and possessions. Wow! Did you see Jovian's new car? It's a sleek looking black Porsche Carrera. One like what that the partner from Deloitte and Touche drives. He must be big in the dance, boy. A fully kitted out Range Rover or Hilux 4x4 with flared fenders and oversized off-road tires, screams, look at me, I am rough and tough and ready for whatever will come my way. 
never mind that the owner of such a vehicle will never go off-road and if he or she does he will get stuck because he doesn't even know how to put the vehicle into four-wheel drive or worse can't even change a flat tire all this is done to create a certain impression for those who look at us in the world. This tendency to define ourselves by the products we consume results in what researchers sometimes call <coughs> the extended self. In other words, our possessions become an extension of who and what we are. People's failure to understand what constitutes a meaningful or successful life as far as the Bible is concerned, suggests that we have a deficient understanding as to what makes our lives meaningful. So, to compensate for this faulty thinking, this shortfall, we are forced to create our own avatars, created by our imaginings from our minds, and hence we always seek to run down the latest cars, gadgets, clothes, or trends just to prove to others that we are successful. Psalm 112, however, seeks to redirect us from such misguided attempts by grounding us in a godly view of what is the blessed life. It is the one that is firmly and deeply rooted in a relationship with God and embodied by actions that result from this relationship. If the fundamental question of our day or any day is, what does it mean to be human and further? What does it mean to have a meaningful life? Then Psalm 112 offers a dynamic response. In the previous psalm, Psalm 111, the poet celebrated the work of God through the redemption of humanity and the provision of his laws, or commandments if you prefer. These works of God are, direct, are directed at humans for the sake of an individual relationship from each and every one of us with God. God has acted in such a way so that humanity has a choice to respond. The psalm begins with what we would call a call to praise. Hallelujah. Happy are those who fear the Lord. The word hallelujah occurs repeatedly at the beginning at the end of this psalm. Then, in verses 2 and 3, it indicates that one who is obedient to divine will shall have strong, honest, and blessed descendants, and a house in which there are riches and wealth. But I hasten to add, I do not believe that the riches and wealth that are referred to here are the type, are the worldly type that will pass away, that are subject to theft, moth and rust. The words of these verses echo in many ways the promises given by God to Abraham in Genesis. God promised Abraham descendants, land, a house and blessings. And based on what we have read earlier on in our canticle, we all know how things turned out for Abraham who is one of the biblical patriarchs. Those who are obedient will have riches and wealth in their house, and such a person's righteousness will last for all time, just as the righteousness of God endures for all time. So does the righteousness of a content person described in Psalm 112. Verses 5 to 9 speak of the one who fears the Lord. 
how he will be, he or she will be gracious and lend to others. Such a person will be slow to speak words of praise or condemnation. In fact, they will be thoughtful and consider all that they can before responding. In verse 6, a reader, the reader learns that the person, now called the righteous one, with character traits that have been described in verses 5 and 7 to 9, will, be, will further not stumble and will not fall in this life, despite danger from uh, without and oppressors. This person is not afraid, having a heart that is established in the Lord and is steady. In fact, here is one who reaches out his or her hand and gives to the needy in a cheerful manner. Finally, verse 10 describes the fate of those who do not follow what it is. Verse Psalm 112 is saying about the blessed life. While a light will shine forth in the darkness for the upright ones, the desire of the wicked ones will perish. Part of the satisfaction of the godly is to be vindicated not only before God, but also before their enemies. Such vindication serves as a moral and a warning. Thus the wicked will see the blessings upon the righteous and be grieved and angered and become jealous. Perhaps they may even experience pain. The fin this final verse shows us our alternatives. They are only two ways. One way leads to heaven and eternal life, and the other way leads to hell and eternal damnation. In this world, we can only live one life that is either godly or a life that is wicked. In the light of the end, since the desire for the wicked shall perish, is not the choice clear? Is not the reason to serve God rather than this decaying world and its culture and its lust clear? My brothers and sisters, I have said these words to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us now turn to page 69 in our Books of Common Prayer as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Page 70. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us turn to the suffrages on page 70. <clears throat> Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. 
Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. We now turn to the Collect for Proper 23, which is found on page 179 of your Books of Common Prayer. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed, precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now return to page 71, where we will say the first and the last prayer found on that page. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, creator of day and night, giving rest to the weary, renewing the strength of those who are spent, bestowing upon us occasions of song in the evening, as you have protected us in the day that has passed, so be with us in the coming night. Free us from evil, sin, and fear, for you are our light and salvation, and the strength of our lives. Grant, Lord, that we may be faithful to you without turning aside, worship you without growing weary, serve you without failing, diligently seek you, happily find you, and forever possess you, the one and only God, bless for ever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Sundays O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now turn to page 76, where we will say prayer number two for strength. May the strength of God pilot us. May the power of God preserve us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the shield of God defend us. May the host of God guard us against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. May Christ be with us, Christ before us, Christ in us, Christ over us. May your salvation, O Lord, be always ours this day and forevermore. Amen. Prayer number four, also on page 76. A prayer for direction. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers. Direct our way towards the attainment of salvation, that among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may be always be defended by your gracious help through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now say a prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. We now return to page 73, where we will recite a prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. 
Take us and use us to love and save all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go in peace to serve and love the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters, evening prayer is now ended. Do continue to have a blessed week. Remember to continue to sanitize your hands wherever possible. Cover your face with a mask. And do not attempt to go into crowded places because you do not know who has what. May the Lord be with you. Continue to have a blessed evening. Amen.